Hello everyone, welcome to Project Veritas, Wall of Shame, where the journalist's reputations go to die, where journalists have to end up putting retractions and corrections in articles questioning our journalism ethics and attacking us, but they just can't get their facts straight. This is Retracto number 342, the subject of which is a front page New York Times article that has led to other people being forced to print retractions based upon duplicitous suppositions, vapid reporting, innuendo, circumstantial nonsense. Cue the Retracto theme song because the spin zone ends here. Retracto, the correction Now this is an unusual retracto because someone did in fact print a retraction correction, but it was actually, these people actually did the right thing. This was Business Insider, Yahoo, which uh, cross-circulates what Business Insider writes. They actually printed a correction and I'll get to that in a minute. But it was based upon what the New York Times reported and insinuated in this front page hit piece Thursday of last week, quote, McMaster was said to be a target in plot to vilify Trump's enemies. And in this front page hit piece in the New York Times, which is clearly a response to our winning motion to dismiss in a defamation action against the New York Times, the New York Times says it was, quote, unclear who organized this. But they mentioned Project Veritas throughout the article, so it led to all manner of people, Chuck Todd, MSNBC, the woman from the New York Times going on MSNBC, we'll get to her in a minute, uh, Business Insider and Yahoo News. Now, Business Insider actually did the right thing. Business Insider did indeed update their article. They had written, quote, Project Veritas planned on hiring woman. They changed that to say operatives planned because the New York Times never said that we were behind this. They said it was unclear whether we did this. Before Project Veritas tried to go undercover to get McMaster fired. After, the New York Times reported that operatives who previously had ties with Veritas. Before, the group planned to secretly record. After, the plan was to. Before, Project Veritas planned an ultimately unsuccessful undercover sting. Afterwards, a group of conspirators planned. Before, when Project Veritas was forming its plan to oust McMaster. After while the plan to expose now McMaster was being formed. Before. Per the Times, Project Veritas then devised a plot. Notice there's a pattern. The New York Times never stated that we were behind this, but insinuated that we were by mentioning us throughout this article and then saying it was unclear whether we were behind it. It might be fair to expect other outlets like MSNBC and Politico to run wild and jump to spurious conclusions based upon the New York Times inferences. But what I didn't expect is for the New York Times' own staff to draw conclusions based upon the article where they said it was unclear or behind it. This is reporter Katie Benner going on MSNBC and saying that Project Veritas was behind the McMaster plot uh, when the New York Times said it was unclear. What we saw was Project Veritas, a conservative group best known for gotcha videos in which it tries to expose some sort of wrongdoing amongst progressive groups and amongst the media, was working closely with a former British spy in order to entrap people within the Trump administration suspected of not being loyal. And H.R. McMaster, the national security advisor, he was one target. Wait, wait, you're stating as fact that he was a target of mine? When Mark Mazzetti and Adam Goldman, your colleague reporters, said in their article it was unclear? Both things can't be true. Yahoo News and Business Insider just printed a correction, retraction, for reporting what you just said on MSNBC. We try to expose some sort of wrongdoing amongst progressive groups. Do you know how many people have been fired as a result of our journalism? What you selectively edited out was the uh, Department of Justice official that one of our undercover people uh, had filmed saying they were scanning license plates. Um, so, and so we ran the license plate and it was a car registered to Jeremy Wiley. So yeah, his car is parked outside a house that he does own as of very recently and someone saw him through a window, which is also very good. So we're able to run license plates through like... You can, we cannot do it officially. There's a lot of talk at work about like how we can resist from inside. Yeah. And there's like a lot of kind of like pushback. And that led to an investigation and Allison Raybar from DOJ lost her job. You didn't include that 
Katie, when you went on MSNBC and lied about us. Stuart Crawford from the State Department. Is this everything? Everything. Every level. What is, what is public record in this world? I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe someday I'll go to Board of Elections jail. Probably not. They're bragging about how they get away with it. Uh, like, what's going on? The other we can't um, like, Yeah. And you're protecting them. But that wasn't the only New York Times reporter who went on TV and contradicted what Mark Mazzetti and Adam Goldman wrote in their article about it being unclear whether Project Veritas was involved in the McMaster investigation. This is Nick Confessori, political reporter for the New York Times, who had this to say. Look, if I tried to sell this story to Netflix, Nicole, they would toss me out of their offices and say it wasn't realistic. That's because it wasn't true. That's why you'd be tossed out of the Netflix offices, because this is a delusion in your own head, Nick. But really what you have here is a modern day version of Richard Nixon and Gordon Liddy and the Plumbers, um, a group of activists on the right, Trump allies, who were funded by his donors, who recruited a former spy and other operatives to train people of Project Veritas uh, into subverting FBI agents. So that's false. Even Adam Mazzetti and Mark Goldman said that it was unclear whether we did anything about, about that. And it's really hard to distinguish that from what a foreign government would do to try to get dirt on counterintelligence investigations uh, or people in the U.S. government. Only this was aimed by supposed patriots at our own government. Supposed patriots at our own government. Isn't it the paragon of investigative reporting to report on what federal government employees say and do? Isn't that what you're supposed to be doing at the New York Times? You know, that whole investigative journalism thingy? Like, Nata Rajan at the Government Accountability Office, who we recorded in our deep state investigation, bragging that everything he's doing with his DSA work, he's not supposed to be doing at his job? Everything I'm doing with DSA is stuff I'm not supposed to be doing for work. I'm very good at slacking off on my job. They told these things to strangers in open restaurants. One of these at a political meeting. And we reported it. They sit, they talk. They tell a stranger this, we publish it. And you try to equate that with subverting the FBI? She's a paralegal at the Department of Justice. And she was fired. And you selectively edited that out. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You're a disgrace. And they're not the only ones who, who falsely insinuated conclusions from this hit piece. This is Politico, said the same thing. You had Fox 5, Project Veritas, aimed to discredit uh, Trump's enemies. You had Oliver Darcy from CNN, per the New York Times. The campaign was won by Project Veritas. I'm reading a book right now called The Gray Lady Winked. It hasn't come out yet, but there's some quotes in here that I think applies directly to our current situation. The Times came to represent a similar ideal, the principle that despite every consideration of expedience and ideology, the truth must always win. Without this principle, which sits at the foundation of the proverbial fourth estate of governance, a free press, liberty means nothing. That's what it used to stand for. In this book, the author points out the heart of the matter. For, this, for these sorts of people, truth is not the aim. In, In fact, fact, there is no such thing as truth as it has been understood. Two plus two equals four is not necessarily any more true than the statement two plus two equals five. What we fight for here at Project Veritas are things so fundamental. The right to relay to other people what we have been told in public places. Compare that to what the New York Times is doing. It's unclear whether they were behind it. And then their own reporters go on television, defame us, and are potentially working with the government to try to target us with some perhaps FISA warrant to stop us from quoting people and reporting what they say. And that is why Project Veritas, both literally and figuratively, cannot lose. We will not lose. In fact, we've just been given a gift. Katie Benner, Nick Confessori, immediately retract, or I'm gonna sue your ass, and I'll see you in court. Retract the correction of